people don't know that this place exists. There's only been one other person in the world that's been allowed to come and film in the place that I'm filming. The most expensive car in the world. I just have to touch it. Here we go. I touched it. Welcome back to What's Inside. Today we have a really, really rare and awesome video for you guys. Right next to me is what most experts will say is the most expensive car in the world. This is a 300 SLR Uhlenhaupt. We are very grateful to be here today. Our friends at Mercedes let us come. Apparently they have 11 different vaults of cars that are kind of hidden strategically around different places in Germany. Today we're gonna tour three of them and see what's inside of the vault. Thank you to our friends at Mercedes for letting me come out here. A lot of like classic Ferraris are like 40 million, 50 million dollars. This thing is basically double or triple that. The Falcon wing doors on a Tesla are not that unique. This was happening way back in the day. Look how those things open. Let's look inside of this car. Ooh. One of only two in the world that were ever made. There's only two of them in the world. One of them's in a museum, then they have this one here. Mercedes is never gonna sell it. This is legit. I touched it. My shoes are so squeaky in here. This was the first race car to be in the aluminum color. And so now if you look at a lot of these race cars and a lot of the cars with Mercedes, you see a lot of the silver that is on it and like the aluminum body. This is our friend Dennis. He works for Mercedes and he's helping give us some insights behind the scenes on like what these cars are and the history of them. Like for example, this one, it's Michael Schumacher's first car that he drove with Mercedes and he's a seven time world champion. What's inside? Let's have a look. The, the wind tunnel for, for the fresh air. Goes for the through coolers, the door. Goes through the door. So basically this cools the engine, right? You have all this wind that comes down in through there. That's a real racing cockpit. Not quite as comfortable as you would think. But as a race car driver, it's not about comfort. It's about winning, right? Why is there one button that says problem? Mille Miglia. They rushed down to Rome and back, so that right. 1,000 miles, but they have to rush through the through the normal traffic, so that was no no closed roads. And this car scored the second place driven by the Argentinian guy Juan Manuel Fancho. So every car in this vault has a story. This was a transporter for the race car. This thing would go a max speed of 105 miles per hour. You're driving your Mercedes, you're going feeling pretty good about yourself, and then all of a sudden this blue giant beast comes flying past you. This is an 80 year old car, 80 year old racing car. The drivetrain is just right down in between your legs as you're driving it. One thing that I think is interesting is if you look at the cars back then, look at the steering wheel. You have a nice leather steering wheel. Here's a more recent car. This is for Lewis Hamilton's car that he drove in 2017. He was the runner up in the world championships with this. But take a look at the steering wheel and look how different it is nowadays. This is more like you're playing PlayStation or Xbox than driving a car compared to the other one. I mean, look at all the different options on there that you're driving. This car right here in 1994 won the Indy 500. It was in first place. They took one of the older engines and used some different techniques that were within the rules that made it boost the turbo and gave the car an extra 200 horsepower. And so this car won pretty easily. It was kind of like a one and done. It won and they changed the rules while they're having the celebration and that was it. But pretty cool. This is the actual car. I'm touching it. I touched it. Sorry people, the Mercedes for not, hopefully I was supposed to touch that, but I did, I touched the car. And then up here we have basically your advent calendar of F1 race cars. This one broke the record, this yes. this car right here. 1936. 1936. So, this is what it would have looked like. Yeah. 1936, it's just like a silver bullet. So you're not gonna believe this, come here. Slugbug yellow. Right there! That's not so, a look! It looks like it, it's not. So you got it wrong, so I could touch it twice. I don't know about that. We have a game where we hit people when we yeah. see it. We have a game where we hit people when we see yeah. it. But usually it's like a Volkswagen Buck or Beetle. Yeah. Ferdinand Porsche. So he invented the car at Mercedes-Benz. And then really? he opened his own company where it was used at the Volkswagen Beetle. What? Okay, so this is before the Volkswagen Beetle. Very few were built. It's a prototype and uh, it was not a serious production car. So, so not that many. Only a very few prototypes, but the idea was invented with Mercedes-Benz. We have the star again. That's really cool. So I am right. So now I get to hit you. Was it in you Let us know in the comments. Who should be able to hit who? Like, was I right in hitting Lincoln it's on hitting that car? It's not. Is Lincoln right or am I right? This is the first automobile ever invented, 1886. This car was called the Benz Patent Motor Car because Carl Benz was the one that invented it. This is how you would steer. See the wheel turning there in the front? I'm, I'm trying not to break it. And it's, it's been around for a lot of years though. I think it's pretty strong. It's crazy to think that it really wasn't that long. Like 150 years, we didn't even have cars. 
The speed of innovation, even back in the 1800s, is something to be marveled at. We saw the car earlier that Carl Benz invented that was the little three-wheel car that you steer in the front. 15 years later, they took the horse carriage, they put a motor in it, and they made this car. But then after only two years of this being the mode of transportation, which I'm sure this was so much better, two years later, they come out with this one that looks like a car. It has thicker tires, th thicker wheels. The motor is in the front. It's, it has more room in the back and it looks like a car. Even today, like you look at technology and how much it changes from year to year. One week in the internet world is really like a year because things advance so quickly. That's one thing that Mercedes has been doing for many, many years. What do they currently have? What are the needs of the population? And how can we take our engineers and develop something that fits the needs? This one was built in the 1930s. And the amount of money that it costs to build this is equivalent today to owning a Learjet, basically. There were less than 50 of these cars made back in the day. You could either buy this car or you could buy a house in Berlin on a lake with tons of land. Like that's how much this thing costs. So only the luxury super elite would have this car. As of right now, among the 11 facilities, there's 1,135 Mercedes-Benz cars in here. I feel like this one looks kind of like Doc from Toy Story. I think that one's in Mario Kart also. In the 1930s, people were interested in the engine, how it works, and so you can have a look inside what's inside the engine, how does the engine work. This is the beginnings of our YouTube channel right here. <laughs> Back in the day, people were even curious what's inside. Look at this, oh, everything, you can see they've done cutaways on every part of the engine. We cut open an engine, we cut it in half, but we used a saw blade and went straight through it. And it looked okay, but not as cool as what that looks like. Oh, whoops, I touched it and it says, please do not touch. This car behind me is super rare. They found it in a barn in Australia in 2001. And what I think is cool about Mercedes is what happened is they got an email from the person that found this and said, hey, would you guys like this car? They didn't want to touch this car because everything has been verified to be legitimate original on this car. So none of this has been restored. None of it was worked on. It was parked in a barn for years and years and years. And they think it's something that has value and it tells a story. They don't do this for the money. They don't keep these cars and go, oh, this is $50 million or oh, this is $100 million. They do it because they're passionate about the history of the Mercedes-Benz cars. They're passionate about the technology and where they are now in 2018 and how everything going back all the way to 1886 has gotten them to where they are now. The only time that they really think about price of any of these cars that we're walking past right now is when they have the insurance adjusters come once a year and they go through and they have to put a valuation on these cars in case of some sort of damage. Well, we, we got this in the museum. It was used for donation, so everybody who donates for, for a special thing can put on a sticker on it. And yeah, I think the Hampstead Hotel with a cow on top. Uh. What? They would drive this around the outback and they would try to raise donations for these children. And every time somebody donated, they would put their sticker on the car. And what you're looking at here is the only Mercedes hearse in the entire collection of 1135 cars. It was from Italy and they thought that it was really unique. It looks, it does look like something straight out of Vatican City. This is your 70s car right here. This is classic. Look at these rims down here. Woo. And then we've got, of course, what interior is it going to have? We got the brown suede material, nice little uh, fire extinguisher right there. It smells kind of like a new car still from the 70s. This car right here used to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's car. Lincoln. 
Quiz time. Who is Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do you know who that is? No. No. That's sad. Matt, Lincoln doesn't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. What do you think about that? Come on, man. Come on, man. Terminator? Terminator. He hasn't seen the Terminator. You heard of the Terminator? Uh, what else is he in? <laughs> Jingle All the Way? Jingle All the Way, Lincoln? Christmas movie? No. Do you know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? Yes, he was the governor of California. Kids these days, if you're watching the video, maybe you don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Well, this is his car, the Terminator. He sold it to his neighbor. His neighbor called Mercedes. Hey, do you guys want to buy this car? Smart neighbor. We're in a 1960s Mercedes, and this is where we're going to end our trip. Mercedes, this was a crazy day. Like, there's so much that I didn't even show you on camera. Poor Lincoln comes all the way to Germany, and he has one of the worst colds that he's ever had. He doesn't even have a voice. Can you whisper something to us? What was your favorite moment of the cars? Here. There's some cool cars here. So this is a small sampling of the history of cars and the history of Mercedes-Benz. It's been around since day one of automobiles. Mercedes gave us this opportunity. They did not pay us to say anything here or to do anything. They paid for our flights out here and let us have this experience. So um, really, really cool. Show them some love. If you liked this video and thought it was interesting, give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel and let us know what else you'd like to see that's car related. If you haven't watched our S-Class video where we cut open the seat, go check it out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye, says Lincoln. Goodbye. What's inside? That's inside?